Hello and welcome to Let's Talk About It. This is your host, Taylor, and I hope that you are having a wonderful week. I hope you are living your best life as best you can. You're doing great. There's a lot of things going on. I'm sure there's a lot of things happening in your life. You're doing things. You're doing the best that you can. I hope you can practice some self-compassion towards yourself and remind yourself that you are worthy, that you are deserving of pleasure, that you matter even more than what you produce, that what you produce does not determine your worth and that you are free to literally be whoever the fuck you are. (laughs) So with All of that said, welcome to the show. I'm so happy to have you here listening and I'm very excited to share with you the guest that we have for today's episode. They actually have gotten connected to me through the podcast through a previous guest. So previously when we had Lola Jean on, um, the world record holder for largest volume of squirt, Um, (laughs) this is her uh, partner who they've like partnered with um, on several different courses. Courses that they've taught and and, and have worked together. Um, so I'm really excited to introduce y'all to LT Hawk, who is a black queer and non-binary creator and artivist, combining their art and activism to advocate for transformative justice. LT is a radical pleasure-based sex educator, professional dom kink coach, and erotic performer. So today we're going to get into Choking for Pleasure, which is one of the courses that both LT and Lola Jean have um, collaborated on. We're going to get into a little bit of non-monogamy and compersion. We're going to get into a little bit of therapeutic spanking and boundaries and communication. So as always, I hope that you have an open mind, open ears, and an open heart coming into today's episode. And it's okay if you feel a little bit uncomfortable. It's okay if you feel activated listening to this. It's okay if things come up for you. Take care of yourself. And with all that said... Let's talk about it. All right. Welcome, LT, to the show. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me today and and be here with me virtually. Yeah, thank, thank you for having me. I'm glad to be here. I'm yeah. interested, excited. Yeah, I love it. Um, I was wondering if we could start off with you just kind of sharing like the identities that you hold, the kind of work that you do, just to give people a little bit of an introduction as to who you are and and where you're coming in at. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. Uh, so uh, identities I hold, that's, um, you know, that's, yeah, that's always, that's always uh, a, a place of like reflection and mm-hmm. um expansion i suppose right or mm-hmm. but Definitely. you know in a very like concise way um i'm i'm a black human um i identify more as gender free but um mm-hmm. non-binary uh queer and um uh, you know just a also a member of of community um uh, mm-hmm. so i think that those are the identities that I hold close, uh, as far as work is concerned, you know, as, as well, um, I'm a pro Dom X. I am a king trainer. I am a pleasure based sex educator, an artist, a performer, um, uh, a creator, uh, mm-hmm. a collaborator. Um, I facilitate as well. Obviously we have workshops and, and mm-hmm. classes and I work with people in sessions in, uh, you know, before COVID times. Um, and I also, uh, I'm an, uh, an advocate and an activist um, around rights, labor rights, mm-hmm. uh, racial justice, uh, uh, climate justice, and mm-hmm. transformative justice. So I have a lot, do a lot of work in transformative justice as well as um, restorative justice circling um, mm-hmm. and holding spaces in those areas as well. So mm-hmm. yeah, those are those are some of the communities, identities. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. That I am uh, known for, known known about. Mm-hmm. You busy? I am active. <laughs> you are active, yeah. I'm active, That's... but not busy. <laughs> okay, I like that. I like that. 
active but not busy. You know, I'm not busy. I'm not busy. I am not mm. busy. Don't don't want don't want busy work. Don't want grind. I'm not grinding and I'm not busy. I am uh, active yeah. in spaces that are I'm passionate about. I'm active in mm-hmm. in spaces where I can be uh, a resource and where I can learn mm-hmm. and, and I can you know be fed and grow in. Um, mm-hmm. But um, I'm no good to anyone if if I'm not also recovered and he, and and working on my own healing and my own um, yeah. pleasure. So mm-hmm. not busy. Absolutely, I strive to not be busy. So this resonates with me very very much to just be active. I like that. I think words are very important. The words that we yeah. use, and so that kind of reframe is super helpful. And I've never heard anybody put it that way before. Oh, well, I'm happy. I'm, I'm all right. Yeah. See, there we go. Podcast over. I've done <laughs> the whole, I've done it all. Everyone's, everyone's good. That's what we, I came to do. I am like fulfilled. Yes, now. yes, exactly. <laughs> um, I'm wondering if you can share a little bit of just kind of how you got into doing the work that you do um, today. Like how did this all come about for you? Yeah, that's. Um, yeah, I still trying to figure out how how I ended up <laughs> ended up in this space. But um, for 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 many time, more many years, um, mm. I was it was more lifestyle um, experience, not so much professional. Um, so my life of exploring kink uh, communities, uh, BDSM, uh, alternative relationships, you know, mm-hmm. pers- pursuing happiness in, in in a sense, right? Pursuing happiness. Um, that I can create, I can, I can customize per se. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and trying to tap into things that feel good, that, that feel good to me, um, as opposed to trying to live up to what, um, my, what societal expectations are of mm-hmm. me and what would make me happy and unlearning mm-hmm. to pursue those things. So it's been a, um, it's been a journey and continues to be so, but as yeah. far as getting into it professionally, um, you know, seeing that there is a need for people with, with knowledge and, and, and being able to teach. Um, mm-hmm. So I used to teach, um, I used to teach uh, community health and I started doing that like when I was in high school. Um, mm-hmm. And I also was a martial arts instructor for over a decade. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I have a lot of experience just teaching and, and, and teaching people of different learning styles and different uh, experience levels and different ages and, and goals um, mm-hmm. and desired outcomes. Um, so being able to meld my um, enjoyment of, you know, uh, leading groups and leading, uh, leading workshops and classes uh, with something else that's like a, a huge part of um, my own uh, journey towards liberation and helping mm-hmm. people move into that. So that was the round. So I started the classes that people uh, see me teach now. Uh, we started doing that around 2016, 2017. Um, mm-hmm. And um, so me and my work partner, um, we have videos with Lola Jean. Well, we started mm-hmm. teaching classes together in like 2017. Uh, mm-hmm. Lola was doing some uh, some session wrestling and wanted to get better at it. Mm-hmm. Wanted to get better in, in doing it, and I started wrestling when I was like a kid. So, yeah. Uh, so yeah, so it just it just kind of worked out really well um, mm-hmm. that we uh, inhabit similar communities, have an alignment of of, des- of desires and, and ideals, and mm-hmm. so yeah, that's kind of how it started. Yeah, and so does this mean that you're also in Baltimore? No, you said you're no, in New no. York. I'm in New York. Yeah. I'm yeah. York. Okay. Okay. Yeah. After recording with Lola, we had a whole conversation about how, yeah, she's from Baltimore and I was in Baltimore as well. So I was thinking, oh, oh no. Yeah. yeah. We know we met in Brooklyn. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, we met, in, we met in Brooklyn. Yeah. Well, I, I love unpacking this shit. And you said earlier that you felt like you were kind of on this, you know, path to, for like liberation and define pleasure in your life and kind of unlearning the the path that you felt like you were supposed to be on, um, being the kind of person that you felt you should be. Um, what did that person look like that you should have been? Um, yeah, that's a, that's, a good, uh, that's a good question. So I would say it's, it's also the question sometimes I, I get asked, not so much anymore, but people would say, well, when did you figure out you were into this thing or when did you figure out you were um, non-monogamous or polyamorous or whatever, mm-hmm. all these things. Um, and very similar to, you, you just always, for me, it's always been a thing, you know? So for me, it wasn't, um, it wasn't really discovering um, that I 
my idea of what a happy lifestyle would be or, or, or what fulfilled me uh, was. It was more about uh, letting go of trying to not be. Mm. So for me, it was uh, always a, a, a internal battle of saying, I need to be this very normative thing because that's what exists. And mm-hmm. a big part of that for me was early on, it wasn't a community. There weren't podcasts. There wasn't, uh, you wasn't YouTube. There wasn't Instagram. There just weren't places where um, you could go to get information um, from the comfort of your, you know, comfort of your cell phone. And in, there weren't a lot of people really working to uh, create opportunities to learn in, in, in a very formal way. Um, so for me, it was like very tricky early on because I knew that I didn't feel, um, I knew I didn't feel comfortable. Um, one is uh, identity is like where my gender was assigned at, at mm-hmm. birth. And then two, not feeling comfortable um, saying that I want to be in uh, a monogamous relationship. Although mm-hmm. I, know I did all that I could to be in those because I, I realized that, but this is how people want to, are yeah. saying they want to be loved. This is how people are accepting love. Um, and but by doing that, by trying to conform to what people were accepting, I was uh, inadvertently uh, not accepting myself mm-hmm. and not being in a place of uh, self-acceptance, not being in a place of self-love uh, made, mm-hmm. it, uh, very, um, made it very, made me, at least in my experience, um, very incapable of showing up fully in any relationships, uh, mm-hmm. romantic, personal familial doesn't matter. Like I I never was showing up as myself because I wasn't ever connecting to myself. And I ignored that personal relationship um, to exist in the world. That's very normative. And of course, not of course, it's still very, um, we still lack a lot of diversity Mm -hmm. um, and inclusion in spaces where people have the opportunity to explore um, their sexual freedom and sexual power. Um, Mm -hmm. So and then when I started, it was even more, um, you know, the anti, anti-blackness is even, I don't know if it's greater. It's hard to even say if it's greater, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. it, it, that that's, it's hard to quali- quali- qualify that. But what I would say is that it may, without the, without the connectivity that we have now through technology, it made it much more challenging to be able to mm-hmm. find communities where you could explore acceptance um, yeah. and you could connect with other people um, who had a shared cultural heritage, heritage experience with you. Um, mm-hmm. when we talk about the people, the global people, I should say, you know, and mm-hmm. not having a space that centers whiteness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel like a lot of the sex spaces center whiteness. A lot of sexuality in our culture centers whiteness. Mm-hmm. And when yeah. it isn't, it's very um, overly sexualizing of people of color, mostly of, of black people. Yeah, there's a whole, yeah, these spaces are, are yeah. Mm-hmm. My yeah. friend Fabio likes to say these spaces are hella white. Um, <laughs> so, uh, and and they are, yeah, it is. Um, and it, and it's a difference between like um, how someone's skin is, right? So we're like, there's like this, mm-hmm. this yeah, because, right, because for me to accept that is I have to accept the unacceptable, which is that race is is uh, uh, is a biological fact, which it isn't, mm-hmm. right? So mm-hmm. when I talk about these spaces centering whiteness, I'm talking about the the mythology, the the, the concept of whiteness, right? Yeah. Um, not necessarily white skin, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, even though, of course, that that plays into maybe beauty standards, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but people mm-hmm. also affected by, you know, the way bodies show up, right? You know how yeah. able someone's body is. How mm-hmm. what how it's shaped, you know, whether it's fit, whether it's small, whether it's you know all those things, um, and you know when you have a culture that is rooted in white supremacy and centering whiteness and the white experience and the pleasure of white men, particularly, mm-hmm. right? So yeah. not just all white people have power in these spaces, right? Um, so you, when you center the pleasure of white cis uh, men, usually straight white cis men, you have you have a space that. If someone um, is of global, is if you have non-white people mm-hmm. in these spaces, like you described, right? They're either fetishized um, or they're over-sexualized, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, or their sexuality is 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 tied to uh, a fantasy that dehumanizes them in, yeah. in, in many ways, right? Um, and it cuts off people of color because that's what society does, right? From allowing you 
mm-hmm. to explore your sexuality. It's another thing that I, I get into a lot in my, in my work, um, mm-hmm. which is important. So all my work is tied to that. So for mm-hmm. anyone who decides to like, f- you know, follow me uh, yes. or, or come to any things that I do um, when I'm doing it, so, you know, on my own. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, they're going to uh, understand that it's a, uh, I, I like to call myself a radical pleasure based sex educator. Mm-hmm. Um, because I, I, I believe that there's, for people to explore sexuality that leads to change, it can't be short of revolutionary, right? And people want anything short of revolution, which means I don't want to do anything that's going to put me in a position of uncomfort. Mm-hmm. Um, it's going to put me in a position where I have to give up some privilege or give up these ideas that I had. But the, the, the truth is that you can't, you can't unlearn and learn something without giving up something, right? Mm-hmm. Giving up something that you've held on to for a very long time. Yeah. You know, and through that, there, there's healing. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, I love that that is a piece of your work because I think that's a piece that is missing in a lot of sex education, not just um, in like school, but also from sex educators specifically, because again, majority of the field is centered in, in whiteness. And so a lot of the people that are practicing sex education, um, I think miss that piece. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. I mean, yeah, it's not, it's not, I should say it's, it's, it's not part, it's not part of my work. It informs it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because, you know, there is no, we, we're not going to have justice in anywhere, anywhere in this society mm-hmm. or in this world, um, yeah. until we start dismantling uh, oppressive systems, um, mm-hmm. and people need to, you know, decol- de- decolonize is such a such a word that you know we've used and and um, it has a lot of great uses, um, and sometimes maybe it's been used in ways that aren't necessarily serving the purpose mm-hmm. of it, right? Um, mm-hmm. But a lot of I would implore people to decolonize their their pleasure, or decolonize their dating. Mm-hmm. Um, Regardless yeah. of who they date, yeah. you know, like if you, you can be, you know, you can be a white person who date other white people. Um, but, you know, you need to start thinking about, are you upholding, mm-hmm. um, are you upholding values that, that oppress or impede other people from having feel good, right? Mm-hmm. Being able to, to, to access their own pleasure. You know, like, are you yeah. creating an environment that does that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, y'all, we're going to take a short break and... I'm going to do something that I don't know if I'm allowed to do once again. I think I'm allowed to do it. So (laughs) I shared uh, last time about my favorite audio app. I literally use it every night when I go to sleep because my my happy place is sexy time. Okay. That is my escape. That is how I relax. And Dipsy is like the spot. Okay. They're my favorite app, uh, full of sexy audio stories. And, uh, they have brand new, like written stories, like no matter what you're into, they have something. And I'm going to show y'all the one I listened to last night. I really got to keep myself. I got to keep it together. Uh, the one I listened to last night is get intimate with Ronan three. I do actually really like Ronan. The ones that I listen to of him are like me and him and you. So like, it's just his voice speaking to me. You can also filter it where it's like, uh, two women talking or a group of people talking or, um, you and her talking or him and her, whatever, whatever you want to listen to. I like to do the him and you, uh, it's under the rough and wild category. I got dirty talking here. He has an Irish accent, which like, I wouldn't think would be my thing, but I just, I really like his voice, but the description y'all that really got me in Ronan's just finished chopping wood. Mm. <laughs> and come back to find you wearing one of his flannels. <laughs> yes. Yes, I am. Mm-hmm. You come back in from dropping your wood. So I'll give you a little sneak peek. You can listen to like, I'll give you a, few, a little, a little sneak peek into it, but it honestly like lets me explore my fantasies. And if I don't want to listen to something like super sexy and like masturbate, then they have ones that are just like soundscapes as well. And like meditations to help you like just ease off into sleep too. So you got your wellness, you got your sleep, you got your sexy. I mean, it's just, it's really the best audio app. So let's, let's listen to Ronan and I'm going to try to keep my, keep it together. Oh. You know, sometimes when we're laying like this together, my mind starts drifting. I start thinking about my favorite daydream. Mm. I picture us 
waking up together in the cabin. It's always autumn in my mind for some reason. The leaves are just starting to change, and the air smells like earth. Paint the picture, Ronan. The first chill is just settling in, so I tell you to stay in bed. I'll wrap you up in the blankets and kiss you one more time before going downstairs. You know how sweet you are when you're still waking up. I put on the coffee for you and had that sign to split some wood for the fire. I know it'll make you happy if the house is warm when you get up. Yes, it does. Yes. It'll make everything right for you. <laughs> yes, you do. I'm telling you that because it's true, so don't let it go to your head, all right? <laughs> so I come back in to start the fire and you're up. <laughs> in my fantasy, you're an early riser. <laughs> I don't notice you standing there at first, though. He knows me so well. So the kindling and lighting the paper. When I feel eyes on my back. I turn around and you're standing on the landing in my flannel. Mm-hmm. The very bottom of it, barely skimming the top of your thigh. Oh. You've got the sleeves pulled down over your fingers. <laughs> you look so fucking cute. I'm moving you across the room before I can really think about it. And I pull you against my chest and throw you up over my shoulder. Oh. All right, all right, all right. It's going to start to get real hot and heavy in a minute. The This one is actually only like seven minutes long, so they're fairly short. Um, but wow, Ronan, it's it's too much for me. Um, I have to be, be professional right now. So uh, for listeners, for y'all listening, Dipsy is offering an extended 30-day free trial when you go to dipsystories.com slash taylor so finish hanging out with ronan or like me your own um my other favorite one is jonathan uh malcolm i like malcolm i like elliot but like you can go on you can pick your own voice explore on the app okay 30 days of full access for free for free okay like go <laughs> go to d i p s e a stories dot com slash taylor dipsy stories dot com slash taylor get your free thirty day full access to the dipsy app you will not regret it and you will definitely want to share it with friends with your partner it is it's 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 fucking great it's my favorite so with all that said we can we can get back to the show now and uh, I hope we've all pulled ourselves together and it really it just gets much more like there's like moaning and I'm just like oh my god it's so good okay dipsystories.com slash Taylor <laughs> well I want to get into accessing that pleasure a little bit with you because I think I mean first of all you do a lot of work around kink um, mm. and I think this isn't something I've ever really talked about here on the podcast, but I think is something that will be super helpful to kind of help educate folks on and inform them with, um, and that is choking. Um, mm. So you did do a course around choking and how to kind of like choke for pleasure, and I feel like we see this like in porn a lot. I think we do see it somewhat in mainstream of like, you know, women like you to just kind of get like a little rough. Like, yeah, just give her a little choke. You know, that's what she likes. Give her a little choke. Um, and I feel like a lot of people are not doing this correctly. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, I didn't even want to teach it. So for like, um, I, uh, yeah. So I didn't, I didn't even wasn't keen about teaching it so much. And I remember, mm. Lola saying like we need we should teach the class um uh, because like choking erotic asphyxiation all the names that it, you know it goes by within the kink community someone might hear it a different way or breath play mm -hmm. someone may hear yeah. breath play who's listening to this and, and it's very it's all in the same umbrella um these these types of uh activities are oftentimes also called like edge play right because mm -hmm. uh while every activity has some risk to it you know these activities um contain elevated risk right so yeah. the amount of responsibility and and accountability and what you need to know in order to create a container where you can explore this in a safe way or as as safely as possible you know mm -hmm. the it, it just elevates also the amount of skill practice yeah. and attentiveness you need to have um but it's because it's so accessible because you don't need to buy anything right so mm -hmm. it's a difference between saying like oh i'm going to like put hooks in your skin and, and hang you yeah. from the ceiling. Like that requires yeah. a lot more investment, but someone mm -hmm. is like, I have a hand, you yeah. have a, a throat, 
right? Yeah. <laughs> so let's 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 make it happen. Um, and I remember Lola was like, "Hey, we should teach it." And I'm like, "No, nah, I don't know what I'm, I don't want people whatever doing this mm-hmm. stuff." And Lola was like, "Well, they're doing it anyway because they see mm-hmm. it in porn." And now I admittedly did not know that, so I'm like, mm-hmm. "I don't know. Maybe I'm not watching the right porn." Mm. Maybe my algorithm is not correct or something. I just didn't see it. Like, I, I just yeah. did not see it. So I didn't know. And and also being mm-hmm. in, in uh, um, you know, regardless of identity, like I, I live in the body I live in. So mm-hmm. I don't have people actually doing that to me, yeah. you know, like all of a sudden in, in um, you know, in mm-hmm. a intimate situation, um, mm-hmm. all my king play is negotiated. I don't like people just mm-hmm. aren't popping out stuff on me like oh hey yeah. it's a spike back like you know it's like well i didn't know that. i see that coming so i'm not mm-hmm. experiencing that in a way that um yeah. you know uh fem fem people are that uh, uh women that i've spoke, spoken to when mm-hmm. identifying people i've spoken to have described their experiences of, yeah. of having that happen uh mm-hmm. without it really being discussed yeah so yeah. that's how we got into into the teaching it Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and I mean, yeah, like I think about the conversations I've had with men around this and it's, I want them to take the course. <laughs> I will say that take the course. Um, because <laughs> I think, yeah, people don't, they, they just push it a little too far. And I think I always introduce it as like, well, I, literally was strangled when I was younger. So Mm -hmm. I don't want you to actually choke me. Yeah. (laughs) Um, And I know I have to communicate that because I know that 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 it is a trigger for me because of that trauma when I was younger. Um, But it's something I can still play with, but has to be very intentional and communicated ahead of time. But in the past, you know, when I was younger and kind of just first like experimenting with sex, absolutely. That would happen all the time. Like even if you just scroll through some porn and they're like, you know, heterosexual male woman sex, you know, if it's not a direct choking, there is some kind of like, you know, like, fucking her from behind and having his hand just like pulling her throat back. Like there is that kind of um, dynamic at play with the hand and throat, even if it's not specifically choking and where I'm like, makes me a little bit nervous. And sometimes that's like nervous excitement, you know, but other Mm. times I'm like, uh, does she want that? (laughs) Yeah. There's, there's, that's the thing that attracts people to it. Right. Is this uh, the, the thrill of something that it could be, Mm could be dangerous yeah. it could be like edge again edge around the edge right it's mm-hmm. not to be confused with edging play right mm-hmm. so dancing around the edge is doing something that's thrilling but yet could be yeah. kind of taboo or or scary and um mm-hmm. and those things can be ex- enjoyed the same way you can bungee jump right mm-hmm. and and like a certain good way. But if someone was like, hey, I got bungee jump, here's my shoelace. He'd be like, no, I don't want to be hanging on my shoelace. So there's like ways that there's, there's safeguarding. There's a couple of yeah. things that are important. Um, well, one, mm-hmm. I will also say like uh, the reason why the the way that we teach yoga is, is different is um, I've practiced uh, and I've practiced Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu for 15 years, uh, submission wrestling for longer and taught yeah. for over 10 years. So I, I know choking or mm-hmm. in in a way that is applicable where you're not using a ton of strength, um, yeah. where to apply pressure, how not to apply pressure, because the mm-hmm. same thing, like, you know, if you work, if I'm working with an eight year old, I can't like choke. I'm not, no parent wants me to choke the, the dog shit at the eight year old, right? So, no. <laughs> so it's just like nonsense, right? Also not good for like building relationships with, with your students or, or teammates or anything like no. that. So there has to no. be some level of control. Um, Mm -hmm. Because that's how you get better, right? So there's skill control, Um, but also keeping people safe. Another thing is like a big part of of, um, like a word people will hear is rack, right? Risk aware, consensual kink. Um, But what I what I like to what what I practice and what I would like to you know be in community and in conversation with people about practicing is is not just risk aware, but also trauma informed. kink practicing Mm -hmm. you know where you you understand that where we we are acknowledging that um, exploring kink or bdsm or you know any of these activities um, can also be a pathway to to healing from trauma Mm -hmm. whether that's sexual trauma whether that is any other uh, physical trauma or emotional Mm -hmm. trauma Uh, but you also we need to be aware that's part of like 
discussing like what's comfortable and what people uh, want to experience, like what our desired outcomes are. Um, mm-hmm. And it's not rooted in just what I want to experience. Um, and you brought up porn. I don't want to go off on a tangent, but you know, a big thing about porn and like, yeah, like you said, it might just be, I, I've, I've caught up now because of, I've been teaching it yeah. and like, you know, doing, doing our instructionals. And I'm like, okay, what is it that people are seeing? Cause I keep hearing mm-hmm. these stories and they like, these, there's some stories are really uh, intense, um, mm-hmm. you know, and they're, and they uh, really just really show how, um, how much harm is being, um, is being experienced, you know, mm-hmm. and of course the person who is uh, receiving the whole person who is receiving this is also being is harmed, but also the person who's doing it is, is harmed right by mm-hmm. these 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 uncomfortable experience but a, a part of that is because like you said it's just pops up in a scene that's not it's not kink based scene yeah. it's just a sex scene and then all of a sudden you have this thing that is really a, a, a skilled and uh negotiated scene just happening mm-hmm. so you know people it imprints on people um yeah. the reason i think that is 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 i could be wrong but i also find a lot of this material and con- Content to be uh, to to not really a be some people consume this work or even create it and it's actually not about sexual pleasure and exploration but it's really mm-hmm. just it's just it's it's violence right it's yeah. it's it's, it's, the, it's the reenact it's the reenactment of well yeah it's dominance and also people we you know it's another thing we got like whole other podcast also about people reexamining their relationship to the word power you know mm-hmm. because people talk about yep. power dynamics but when when people think about power what they think about is having the power to dominate someone, right? Mm-hmm. To take away someone's ability to make choice, take away someone's yeah. autonomy, right? To be able to set all the rules, right? And that is the wrong. And I'm going to say, I mean, it's uh, the reason why I'm going to say it's a wrong relationship with power is because that type of power is what people have seen through imperialism. That's the type of power mm-hmm. is what people see through colonization, and that is yeah. the, that is why that power in all the isms, right? Um, mm-hmm. Is that why people associate that with power? So you didn't have people enact, reenacting, um, removing, taking power over a woman in, in the scene. So a lot of these yeah. porn is very just much. A lot of it is just, and I'm not anti-porn. Clearly, I'm not anti-porn. Yeah, <laughs> I'm. I you know, so I'm not into anti-porn. I make porn. Mm-hmm. I'm in a porn collective. Not anti-porn. Mm-hmm. Um, I am anti-violence. Yeah, towards towards women. And I am anti-violence or anyone, right? It doesn't just have to, you know, it can, it can appear in, in queer and, and, and uh, LGBTQ plus uh, pornography as well. It just depends on the gauge, mm-hmm. right? So, yeah. So some of that is just like, yeah, I'm just, you know, person's having sex and all of a sudden your hands around around their neck, right? But I mean, what is it? Like, what's next? Like a person having sex, next thing you mm-hmm. know, they're like emptying your bank account or they're like stealing your, your passport. Like, it's just, it's just the same thing. It's yeah. just like, hey, let's have boundaries here. I think boundaries mm-hmm. are important to see and they're important to model. Super. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm wondering if you can get into a little bit of kind of like what the different, what are the different kinds of ways that someone can engage in pleasurable choking? What kinds of questions would someone need to ask or communicate to their partner before engaging in this? Yeah. So even the way that, you know, when when we have our classes and, mm-hmm. and when people uh, access the course, a big part of it is always safety, right? Safeguarding mm-hmm. the environment. Um, but yeah. also when we talk about, you discuss one level of experiencing choking for pleasure is, is fantasy, which means like, mm-hmm. I don't want any restriction of blood or air to my body, right? So mm-hmm. I don't want to pass out. I don't actually want to feel any pressure. I don't want to feel any constriction around any of my airways or around my throat, mm-hmm. right? So then there's fantasy chokes and it's teaching people uh, proper proper body and hand placement uh, if they're using mm-hmm. their hands, of course. And we always, our course, um, this introductory course is about learning how to use your hands and not using um, not using tools, implements, um, mm-hmm. like not a hood, not a plastic bag, not a rope around someone's neck, all those things, mm-hmm. right? Again, that is that's something you need to really, again, be, be safe yeah. about and also not accessible for everyone, you know, not mm-hmm. accessible or even want it. Um, so, yeah. yeah. So a big part of it just is, is fantasy. A lot of people want to feel the, the sensation of having mm-hmm. someone's arm or hand or something around their throat, but they don't actually want to be choked. They don't, mm-hmm. I don't, they don't want to feel like, Oh, this could go 
wrong or this could, yeah. you know, there's too much pressure or anything like that. So, um, so the first level is fantasy and that's part of the discussion. Like what is your desired, if someone says, I want to be, I want to play with choking, I want to experience some mm-hmm. choking. And you say, okay, well, what is your desired outcome? Like what, what are your desires? Mm-hmm. What are your boundaries? You know, what would you like to experience? What would you like to feel? Um, do you like to actually be choked? And everyone's like, well, I don't, actually i want to be able to talk i want to be able to breathe i don't want to mm-hmm. actually feel like you're like choking me um and mm-hmm. then they've established a boundary there right the person yeah. this is what the person wants to to experience um mm-hmm. and if as you as a person who's going to you know be administering you, you have an opportunity with this conversation to opt in and opt out as well right you may say oh i don't want to do that or i don't feel comfortable doing it if someone says i want to really feel like i'm being choked um you may mm-hmm. say i don't feel comfortable you know doing that i don't feel like i can do that properly um, mm-hmm. So those are the initial questions. I think is really just discussing what the person's boundaries are, what mm-hmm. they want to feel, um, asking, making sure they're not uh, under any influence of any uh, substances that may impact mm-hmm. their ability to um, get oxygen to their body. Um, mm-hmm. You want to find out if they have any um, pre-existing conditions that you need to be aware of. If they have any yeah. allergies, you need to be aware of. Um, all these things to assess whether or not this is an activity that you can engage in, uh, in w- while mitigating risk. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I mean, I also feel like all of those types of questions are also great practice to be able to clearly communicate and express your wants and needs and your boundaries while engaging in sex. And I think, unfortunately, mm-hmm. that is a piece that people still feel so uncomfortable with today and that there isn't mm-hmm. enough education around to where even getting into something like that and communicating those needs and boundaries and desires might feel inaccessible to people because it's like kind of another step there. Um, I'm wondering maybe how you have seen people kind of move through um, communicating those things when it perhaps hasn't been a part of their sexual experience at all. Yeah. Uh, So uh, get a Google Doc. Not the mm-hmm. not the big up Google or whatever you want to use. You can use <laughs> Apple Apple Sheets or whatever. I don't care. Whatever it is. Mm-hmm. So you get an app and and write out. Write it out. Not with someone else. Mm-hmm. You know, start off with yourself. Type out, write out your own, you know, desires, boundaries, mm-hmm. and interests. Um, mm-hmm. think about what your hard limits are, what your soft you know, exploratory limits are what you're like, this is what I love to do. Like, these are things I love to do and how yeah. I love to do it. You know, um, put down like, well, what are my, what are my allergies? Am I allergic to stuff? Mm-hmm. Do I have like a, a lube thing? Like, do I, yeah. is there, is do there I have a latex thing? thing? Yeah. <laughs> do I have a latex thing? You know, um, yeah. Is it, is it, do I have something thing with oil? Do I prefer this? Mm-hmm. Um, what words do I want to be called? What names do mm-hmm. I not want to be called? You know, how do I feel cared for? What do I need? For aftercare. And you may say, I don't ever heard mm-hmm. of that word. This is your chance to do it. So I think it's the, yeah, what you said is 100% right. And I think the biggest challenge is that people show up to, people show up to the Boston Marathon without practicing running. So you yes. show up to the thing, you're like, why well, should you know how to do this? Why? Because you have legs, right? So it's, it's like, yes, true. You, <laughs> so you could physically run. Yes, we got that part but you're not prepared for this thing, right? And yeah. it's, and it's nothing wrong with that. It's just like there is a way to prepare um, each time. So mm-hmm. you don't start off with the marathon, which is like doing something that's maybe really involved and requires um, yeah. a comfort level of discussing and negotiating boundaries that you, you don't have yet mm-hmm. and you're building up to. So you don't do New York City Marathon. You do a 5K, right? Mm-hmm. You do a little trot around the park, right? So you're you're building up, you know, so start practicing. So practice, mm-hmm. you know, with yourself, practice with the friends, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, get on a Zoom joint, you know, get on, talk to your friends like, okay, let, I want to practice like talking about my desires. I want to practice mm-hmm. talking about what my boundaries are. Um, and then that way, when you're with someone else, either you're feeling more comfortable to do that or you mm-hmm. can send them the, you can send them the damn document. Yeah, I'm kind of feeling like you better be showing up to all your first dates with a Google Doc. You better hey, be like, all right, what's your email? Let me send over my Google Doc just in case hey, you're going to get into it. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe so. Maybe yeah, that could save you a lot. You know, that could save you some, yeah. some like, you know, some some, uh, some unwanted and uncomfortable mm-hmm. experiences. Um, but also, if you're not willing to engage in that, but maybe even without the Google Doc before the date, maybe you're able to start talking about this on the phone. Mm-hmm 
or um, by text message, right? Just engaging that person in like seeing where they are in their comfort around like safer sex conversations and mm-hmm. uh, being able to express like what they want and what, what they desire. And of course it's just, mm-hmm. I don't, I'm not discounting. Of course, we're not being taught this, you know, we're not even being, or not even such being taught. We're not being given permission. Yeah. You're not giving permission in capitalism to actually assert your desires mm-hmm. and ask for what you want. Right. It's yeah. more about how do I compromise and how do I tolerate and where do mm-hmm. I like, still kind of like enjoy myself while still giving up so much, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, But like the idea behind this is about empowerment, right? So even if you're, Mm -hmm. I like to always say, you know, if you're, even if you're the person who was bottoming, if you're a person who's, who's a sub in a submissive position at that time, you Mm -hmm. know, that person still has all the, that person has all the power in the person Mm -hmm. who is, 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 uh, who is in the D position, the Dom position, the top position, however words people like to interchange them, uh, right or wrong. Um, mm-hmm. That person has control, right? But this mm-hmm. is like negotiated control, right? I'm mm-hmm. giving negotiating control, this person has power. So it's not about relinquishing your power, right? It's about, yeah. uh, it's about seizing your power, you know, to mm-hmm. a point where you feel so empowered that you're comfortable enough. And this person has shown them, mm-hmm. shown themselves to be, uh, caring enough about your well-being and your safety and your pleasure that you are going to allow them to have control for a determined amount of part, time, right? It's not like mm-hmm. I'm going to I'm going to let you, you know, be in the dominant position at this party, and then next Wednesday you're going to be calling me, telling me to come clean your house. It's like I didn't agree to that, right? So mm-hmm. it, it's really about negotiating. But you're right, people got we need to get comfortable, um, mm-hmm. you know, talking about what we want, you know, not going to I had someone, yeah, like someone commented something recently, like on an Instagram post, and they were just saying how, like, at parties, like, oh, that's why we don't say, are you DTF at parties? We say, like, would you like to play? And I'm like, I don't say that. Like, I don't even know what that mm. means. Like, would you like to play? Unless you're holding a joystick in your hand, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. So, <laughs> yeah. if you're like, so you got to be more specific about what you mean in these things, right? Mm-hmm. So, if someone says, hey, I'd I like to have some choking, right? That's what we talked about the mm-hmm. levels. Like, would you, would you like to feel compression? Would you like to feel squeezed on your body? Right. Cause mm-hmm. compressing on someone's body is also an asphyxiation, you know? Mm-hmm. So that may be what someone wants to experience, right? Maybe they just want to be squeezed. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, or they may want to make, feel the, the, the fantasy where they don't feel any relief. And then other people want to be like, mm-hmm. I want to pass out. Right. So it, it's really, we have to be, um, we have to be precise, Mm-hmm. You know, when we are negotiating what we're going to experience, it doesn't mean things uh, doesn't mean we always we, there won't be mistakes. Right. Um, but the yeah. idea is, is not to eliminate. There's never going to be eliminating 100 percent of risk. Again, mm-hmm. this is about reducing risk. This is about mitigating risk. This is about reducing the opportunity chances for harm, um, mm-hmm. not about giving someone a false sense of security as if like, oh, no, this is totally fine. Like nothing mm-hmm. bad could ever happen. We wouldn't yeah. drive cars or even walk dogs if we just, mm-hmm. if we thought not, if we, if we needed the, to be zero risk in life. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. A, a harm reduction approach and understanding that that safer sex versus yeah. like safe sex. I'm like, I don't know that sex is safe. <laughs> uh, yeah. It can be safer, oh. but... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 but definitely not, not, yeah, definitely not safe. And that, and like you thought, that's a great point and a great example of like how... Um, our language has changed, mm-hmm. right? As we as yeah. we move to to like you know yeah to serve the needs of our communities, um, mm-hmm. and yeah, I think you you did you wouldn't climb you wouldn't climb Kilimanjaro without a guide. You shouldn't get mm-hmm. into choking or any really like edge play or uh, BDS any kind of BDSM play or, or kink play without really learning. Mm-hmm. I think you need to take time to learn it. Um, you will have mm-hmm. a better experience, even if it's deferred, right? Mm-hmm. The experience may be deferred to later, but you're going to have a better experience and you're going to offer other people better experiences, right? Mm-hmm. So that they're not turned off. So many people just do, you know, have a really shitty experience. Yeah. And they're like, I don't want to deal with that because that's, you know, that could go really mm-hmm. bad. Um, yeah. So yeah. Yeah. You, there was a article that I think you contributed to, um, that I saw on your page about like the, the therapeutic aspects of spanking, Mm -hmm. um, which just, just kind of came back in my mind as you were saying all of that, um, 
Can you talk a little bit about how some of these, I mean, you, you touched on it a little bit earlier around the choking piece, you know, and how it can be healing when you engage mm-hmm. in it in a really trauma informed, um, you know, in educationally informed, uh, practice, but, uh, for spanking, I think that's also another thing that is so, is so common throughout sex, um, without that informed component, yeah. um, that, there's rarely, I think, actual conversation around spanking. It's either just yelling out, spank me, or them just doing it. And then you're like, oh, (laughs) okay. Are we doing that now? (laughs) Uh, Yeah. uh, (laughs) um, So it is like um, what I would would love to impart to people, if anything, is uh, sex is not something you do um, two people, two. Mm-hmm. you know, sex is, is, is things you share with, with people. Um, yeah. so there, we really want to, we really want to get away from just kind of things happening, um, yeah. to, to people. And, and sometimes people have these, we not sometimes, oftentimes we have pre-established relationships with people. And so mm-hmm. it's not always in a frame, you know, which again, it, we, we, we always need to be conscious about breaking down the, the false number of stranger danger, right? This is not, this is not confined to just someone you hooked up with a, a, a party or someone you met on an app or hookup app. This is not always yeah. confined to that. Like these things happen um, in relationships where people have pre-existing sexual relationships, right? Because someone mm-hmm. got something in their head, right? They just got on yep. this thing. They seen something, they heard something. I don't know what it is, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and they just decided they're going to do this thing, um, yeah. you know, without checking in with the person. Um, and, yeah. and, and and that can happen in what mm-hmm. and if it does happen what i'm not i'm not saying that you are now like the you know this the the you know, the most evil person on the planet right you've you've made a mistake you mm-hmm. have possibly caused harm to to mm-hmm. someone and then there's an opportunity to um repair mm-hmm. and restore your relationship with that person uh when you come from that place yeah. um so you know we are talking some uh, what what i'm talking about is yeah in order to really explore these things in the and and have the experiences you want to have yeah it requires us to do work on ourselves that are not Mm -hmm. that doesn't happen in the bedroom it doesn't have or whatever bedroom ballroom Mm -hmm. wherever this is going now kitchen (laughs) car car seats whatever is all yeah yeah not baby Uh, car seats regular car seats um so yeah wherever this is this happening is it's important Mm -hmm. to 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 do those things but as far as um you know, we talk about like just like spanking and there's, again, talking about like what our interests are in it. Like if you're the person that wants to tap someone's, you know, body or area on their body, is it, are you interested in, in an impact play? Is this mm-hmm. more about impact play than it is about sexual, sexual play? Yeah. Um, for the person who enjoys being, being, experiencing impact in that way from, you know, via spanking, um, it's also like, Oh, just being like slapped on your body, it gets the blood flowing. It gets the mm-hmm. adrenaline flowing, right? It could just be that. Mm-hmm. So like in a certain context, you may really connect to it, right? Where mm-hmm. it, it is, where it's after or during, you know, like intense or passionate mm-hmm. sexual play or some sort of penetrative play or any kind of play. Um, yeah. But it, you may not want it any, any other way. Like it may not feel good any other way. Um, so it's really like, what is what do I enjoy about it? Um, mm-hmm. And learning like where it is safe to hit someone on their body, you know? Mm-hmm. So like, there's like, I mean, I'm assuming people slap people on their butt. I don't know. I guess I imagine that that's where it takes place. I'm talking about like, and this is like out of nowhere place, like, like you know, people slap yeah. the butt, right? Um, yeah. So yeah, they're like, you know, hit, you know, yeah. slap, slap someone's butt. Um, you know, I mean, I don't know. Maybe the person has a bruise on their butt and you slap it and it's like the worst thing that ever happened, right? So uh, again, part of just like checking in and seeing how mm-hmm. like someone wants to do it. Like if you, if you, I'm not saying, all right, you just, you know, you got this thing and you're like, um, whatever kind of sexual position you're in where you can reach their butt and you just like start mm-hmm. like wailing on someone's butt or whatever. Right. Um, yeah. and maybe you don't feel like, okay, I want to like completely stop, you know, turn the light back on and say, Hey, listen, would you like me to slap your butt there? Like, I'm not mm-hmm. as saying you have to go all the way back to zero either. You know, but there you can ask, right? You can ask mm-hmm. just like people ask all kind of 
things during sex, right? Yeah. Um, you can ask like, oh, would, how would you like, you know, if I slapped you in the butt or would you like, yeah. you know, some impact play or whatever? Um, mm-hmm. Or you can like lightly touch their butt and see how they feel about it, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't know. Um, so there's yeah. ways where you can communicate. Um, consent is, um, mm-hmm. is, is important to be very verbal, but it's also important to be uh, in tune with how someone's body is reacting and, and how their nonverbal um, responses are as well, uh, because mm-hmm. they may be in a place where they're just not able to kind of like get the words out, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so you mm-hmm. want to always err on the side of caution, like, yeah, you don't know, don't, mm-hmm. it, don't be slapping people's butt, but all around yeah. the world. Yeah. I mean, I, I do think too, that sometimes sex is that space where people are finally, releasing a lot of tension Mm -hmm. and I think from a very normative standpoint I'm generalizing that a lot of sex especially heterosexual sex for women feels like and maybe just from like my audience and you know listeners of the podcast but yeah that there is more this uh storyline of sex is happening to them, that um, it's something that they have to engage in, that there aren't necessarily opportunities or permission given to be able to ask for these things or to implement these boundaries. Mm. Um, And that feels like a really sad like space for sex to be existing in, Um, which is also just why I love that you do, you know, the education and the courses and stuff that you do, because I do think it makes such a difference in our sex lives, both partnered and solo. Um, And You know, one other thing I want to make sure we have time to touch on today, um, speaking of like partnered and um, in solo sex as well, um, you mentioned earlier, you you do practice non-monogamy or polyamory? I do. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I mean, yeah, practice, I live it. I don't know what it is. Live it. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) My lived lived experience is my uh, romantic Mm -hmm. and dating, um, yeah, Mm -hmm. it's my romantic and dating life. Yeah. Yeah. One thing that I don't think I've ever kind of talked about on the podcast, um, maybe I have briefly, but um, is the experience of compersion um, Mm. within non... Well, it happens, I guess, in in monogamy as well. Depends depends what what you're doing. Um, But... I don't think that's a term that many of my listeners would be familiar with. Um, And wondering if you can kind of share, you know, if you have, if you do experience compersion with your partners or if they do mm-hmm. with you and kind of what that, what that even means. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, compersion is this, this kind of word that comes up in, in mm-hmm. the non-monogamy world. And it, and it really, in its simplest form is just experiencing joy, mm-hmm. uh, from your partner experiencing joy. Mm-hmm. And that is the, kind of the goal of compersion, I guess, for, for people. And I'm speaking like, I'm, I'm, wanna, I'm speaking here not as more of a, a general educational space, right? And that's really the best way to understand the word is that you would be experiencing joy that is not directly tied to anything that benefits you directly, mm-hmm. right? So if, if you're, you're happy because your sister graduated college, right? It's, you're not happy because your sister graduated college and now you can move in her house and then you don't mm-hmm. have to work, right? That's not why you're happy, mm-hmm. right? Uh, you're happy because this is something that is bringing her immense joy. You know, this is something that that she has wanted for a very long time mm-hmm. and has worked very hard for. And you're just you're in, you're experiencing that joy through um, through her, you know. Um, and mm-hmm. it doesn't directly benefit you. And when you experience this with people, so I like to talk about it. I used to talk about it solely in, in the experience of relationships until I started looking at relationships in a grand sense. So mm-hmm. much easier for, I think, for people, I, much easier for non, uh, for queer and, and, and mm-hmm. uh, non-heteronormative people um, maybe to not experience, but to get in this mm-hmm. sense is that we don't have, I don't, I have platonic, I have platonic partners you know, that, that are like family, right? Um, I have no romantic, there's yeah. no romantic, romantic anything. And there's no sexual things involved in it. Um, and I'm happy for them, right? The same way I would be happy for this, you know, theoretical sister or, or brother or, or, mm-hmm. or, 
or they, they friend or, you know, or anyone mm-hmm. in your family. Um, so your friends are, are the same way. Like you have these relationships. There's no one, there is no one relationship that will fulfill any one person. And this is not about romance. Mm-hmm. This is about your life and your happiness. It is impossible mm-hmm. to ask that of one person and it's impossible to provide that for one person. You know, mm-hmm. so we are experiencing these feelings of compersion where we feel joy for these friends, these coworkers, uh, people yeah. you're in the community garden with, all the kind of things. So that's the mm-hmm. idea is that you you are experiencing joy uh, through someone else's joy. And I, and I do mm-hmm. very much ex- experience uh, compersion. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I'm also l- more, more, less likely to have feelings of jealousy naturally. Mm-hmm. Um, mm. but that is a natural, it's like a very loaded term for people, right? Is yeah, I was going to say, I how do you, how do you mean that? Yeah. Well, natural is just like a, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm using a quick word just to get out of it. Right. Mm-hmm. Get out of like diving to taking up too much time around it. But I mean, I don't, it's not, a, it's not the, it's not my initial feeling. Mm-hmm. Right. So my initial feeling when someone is, is experiencing something is not jealousy. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't. I just don't, it's just not something that goes, that goes through my, Mm -hmm. it's not the emotion that I experience, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, not regularly, not really at all very much, you know, which feels Mm -hmm. like odd for people to say, um, or to hear. Now it's odd for me Mm -hmm. to say, it's sometimes it's odd for people to, to understand, uh, because the, you know, they may, we, we may all, we may still be in a point where we're working through the idea of adversarial relationships, you know? Um, and that is more like this person chasing this person or this person trying to get this person mm-hmm. to like this thing or whatever. And it's a very yeah. adversarial idea of like what relationships should look like. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah. So conversion is, you know, is, is for me, like I, I have part- partners, always have other partners. Um, I, do, uh, I focus on relationship agreements, they're not rules. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm happy to hear about, I mean, I'm mean, happy when they're happy. Mm-hmm. Right, because that's the idea of like community and family mm-hmm. and love is about happiness, and mm-hmm. and their happiness is uh, your partner's happiness is really a, again about them discovering what feels good for them, what makes them happy, uh, going through that experience of exploring that. Mm-hmm. Um, there's ups, there's, there's ups and there's, there's, there's challenges. Um, but their happiness is, is not, um, is not centered around me mm-hmm. and, and around mine. So if you feel like, oh, I don't feel so great about this person doing this thing. It's just more about, it's this a feeling of insecurity because maybe you feel like, oh, I don't know. Maybe we, you don't feel maybe it's as strong in your relationship. Mm-hmm. And what I mean by that is that you haven't, talked about it maybe you haven't communicated what your needs are around uh, around creating a, a, a secure uh, uh attachment for like a better word um in that relationship mm-hmm. maybe there's some things that you haven't felt like you've had an opportunity to talk about uh, maybe just haven't talked very much you know because you have maybe multiple partners or maybe you have some distance My, myself i have partners that are at great distance um mm-hmm. so if i have if there's one partner where i don't get to speak to very much because of you know whatever issue scheduling um that i may feel maybe i'll have a feeling of insecurity hearing about dates or new people but it's not the person because i don't know what this person is right and it's not about them being happy and going on dates what i'm feeling is oh i i'm missing something that i want Mm -hmm. in this in in my relationship that i have not asked for Mm. And I, and so I need to like work through my own shit. So you got to understand like when someone is asserting boundaries or someone is exploring their own happiness and their own dating and you have those feelings that come up, it's perfectly normal. You can have feelings that come up, but you got to like, okay, is mm-hmm. this person actually doing something to me? Which they're not, mm-hmm. right? No one's, no person in like in a non-monogamous or polyamorous relationship is actually like dating someone to do some shit to you. Hopefully, mm-hmm. I will yeah. hope not, you know, like, yeah, hopefully that uh, you have other issues that are concerned, right? It's not about dating yes. at that point, but like if someone is out, you know, they're dating and they date other people, it's not about hurting you clearly. Right. So mm-hmm. you, you say, okay, I have some feelings coming up and what is that about? And, and it's really start mm-hmm. digging into like what, uh, it, what the healing is about, you know, for you, for me, for you, um, you know, for, for me, it was a lot, a lot about like healing 
from um, mm -hmm. healing from like family fractures as a young person, yeah. you know, and, and having that feeling, oh, wow, like, you know, when I get really close to these people, these people leave or they disappear. Mm -hmm. So it's like dealing with that grief and dealing with that loss. But you got to understand, like, we're not putting it on people. Sorry to yeah. have like a long comparison discussion. No, I, I'm here for it. I think there's so much in that. And like, I mean, I think a very key component of that is being able to unpack your own shit and recognizing that you may feel something because of what someone else is doing, but that doesn't necessarily mean that what they're doing is wrong or that it has to be hurting you. That oftentimes yeah. if it does trigger and bring something up in you, that is ultimately your responsibility to unpack and work through. You can certainly reach out and ask for support and, you know, can you hold space for me with this? I'm, you know, I want to kind of unpack this a bit, but it also is not their fault or their responsibility. Mm. Like that takes internal work to be able to do. And I think it is such a difficult concept for people to grasp that other people engage with and to practice themselves because we are taught and conditioned and defaulted to this concept that one person should be able to be our everything. And if they're not, then that's because you're not enough because yeah. what you're doing isn't good enough. Mm -hmm. And that piece I think is huge for people to unpack, to be able to actually unlock like the kind of pleasure that they can be experiencing and sharing with other people in their lives. Yeah, no, absolutely. But I, is we also need to um, let go of this uh, judging ourselves so much mm -hmm. all the time. It's like we're, we're yeah. stand, we, we stand in our own judgment um, by like outside standards so much mm -hmm. that we end up doing it to other people as well. So no, yeah. if I go to see my primary doctor and I'm like, what, you can't take my wisdom teeth out? I'm like, no, like motherfucker, like, I, what am I? You know what I mean? So, but they wouldn't be like, oh, there's something wrong with me. I better go back to medical school. Yeah. They would literally be yeah. like, what? No, that's not what I do. Like go see a dentist. Um, you know, so yeah. there is not one, there is no one way, there is no one shop way of being mm -hmm. cared for. Yeah. You know, which is why like some people will claim, oh, this person wants me to be their parent. You know, like they need a parent. Mm -hmm. Well, it's like, okay, well, then there's this person needs care in a, in a way maybe that um, you can't provide, you know, mm -hmm. which is fine. Right. It doesn't mean the care they need is necessarily wrong. Yeah. It may mean that the care, the person they're asking for that sort of care from is not the right, is not the person, appropriate person or mm -hmm. can provide that. Right. So we, it's yeah. about also us setting boundaries of where we can love people and be in relationship with them. And also like saying, mm -hmm. no, you know, there's people who are like, Oh, I got jealous. My partner was talking about, they met someone new. And then, uh, you know, I felt jealous, but then I found I was a woman. So I didn't feel jealous anymore. So like people got some, a lot of like weird fucking hangups, you know what I'm saying? Like around these things where it's yes. like, all right, come on. Like we got to really start on, on uh, beyond unpacking these things. Right. We got to really mm -hmm. start a, uh, owning, you know, the feelings mm -hmm. that we have, like all, it, it's with mo most things around like removing oppression and, and creating mm -hmm. healing around is like all, all harm ain't crime, all crime ain't harm, you know? Mm -hmm. So just because you feel a certain way about something yeah. doesn't mean you've really been harmed by it or you've been mm -hmm. wronged by it. Like it, it may not be anything around that, you know? Uh, but you put it like, yeah, you, say, you, could, you should share. I think you can say, Hey, I'm, I'm not saying this, this is a part thing about conversions. I'm not telling people you need to pretend because mm -hmm. that's also unhealthy. So yeah. if you don't feel good about something, that's fine to say and say, yeah. Hey, I, I can't, I don't feel comfortable hearing about mm -hmm. what happened on this date or uh, I need yeah. to have this boundary around like how much I share around it. Not because it's wrong, I, you know, and you, we need to also say that as course is acknowledge like, oh, this is not about you. It's just, I'm just not like comfortable right now, like to have the conversation in your mm -hmm. mind, like we talk about it another time or later, but yeah. you, not deferred indefinitely. So mm -hmm. please don't use later to mean never. Like I'll do it later, which just means like basically, right? Never, right? The house yep. fucking <laughs> burned down, right? The person moved out and everything else. So it, it really means like, setting a time maybe to talk about it and say, Hey, listen, can I talk to you mm -hmm. tomorrow? Or I'm working through some feelings or, um, and it may not, again, have nothing to do with that day. Yeah. Right. The same, it just might be, you just had a bad day and you just don't want to hear about mm -hmm. somebody getting railed. I don't know if I can know. Yeah. I mean, somebody getting railed. 
It's been so long. It's it's it, yeah, safe, safely, consensually. Safe, it's safely, been so humble. long since I've had sex. I just hear us talking about this stuff, and I'm like spanking, squeezing, <laughs> getting railed. Wow, yeah, people also, still do that. What is that also, like? <laughs> but but also like you know, as a as a kink, uh, we we talked about like spanking therapy. Like um, kink is also mm-hmm. not a gateway drug to sexual contact or sexual yeah. Uh, what mm-hmm. people can what we think of as sexual contact, like kink can be sexual. But it also mm-hmm. cannot be, right? Yeah. It can really, it may be, the person may feel some sexual gratification from it, but it may not take the form of where you have access to someone's genitals or that it escalates. Mm-hmm. So uh, kink is also not like a Trojan horse mm-hmm. to get to yeah. something else where you're like, ooh, I think, well, let me let me spank you. And yeah. then now let me stick, you know, this thing. Let me, let me start filling the holes. It doesn't, yeah. it doesn't lead to that. And I think that's important too, is understand that you can have these mm-hmm. experiences separately Mm -hmm. Or you can have these experiences in many different configurations. And that's also a part of like discussing Mm -hmm. um, how you want to uh, experience those things. And so don't you do that. So don't watch my shit. Don't come to my classes and then go to like play parties, kink parties, sex parties, whatever. Mm -hmm. Seek out people who want to have that experience, not negotiate if it's going to be sensual, sexual, or just, you know, impact play or rope play or whatever, and use it as some kind of escalator to mm-hmm. like get into doing some like sexual stuff. You, yeah. You're not entitled to any sex because you're in, and you engage in care. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. On board with that. Just like, wow, physical touch. People have that still. Yeah, physical touch. What is, is that yeah. like anymore? Okay, well now you're like talking some like really like <laughs> hands off stuff. Like we went from like, I haven't had sex in a long time. It's been, so it's now, been like, a long I've time. Been touched, I've been touched by a human being in the uh, I mean, I get touched by a seven-year-old. That is my that is my only form of, of physical touch. Is of, you know the dances a and the, a, a little bit of snuggles, you know, but not oh, like okay. like sexual touch. So you know, I just notice it come up for myself when I end up talking when I end up recording and I'm talking yeah. about sex a whole lot more. I'm just like, wow, yeah, that's yeah, the that, thing that, that, that used to happened. happen. Yeah. Oh, okay, yep, yeah. yep. Um, well, before I go down my little sad path of thought here, it's not sad. Um, it's a good, <laughs> it's a good share, and it's like relatable to a lot of people, especially yeah. coming out of like the collective and, and singular yeah. trauma that we've had with uh, the pandemic. You know, there is Absolutely. a lot of us have been, um, you know, cut off from mm-hmm. you know our communities, our lovers, our our experiences, yeah. and then a lot. Some of us have contracted. Um, mm-hmm. for many reasons and needs, um, mm-hmm. you know, and some of us are just, you know, we go through, yeah. that's another thing, right? Like I do this thing and then it's a lot of assumptions around like how mm-hmm. much, like sex positivity and polyamory and all these things. It's not about yeah. how much or how little sexual activity or behavior they're engaging in, right? There's really mm-hmm. about, uh, embodying these, these, the, the ideals around, the, mm-hmm. around sex positivity and removing shame, um, yeah. So you can be asexual and be kinky. Mm-hmm. That's a thing, yeah. right? You can be asexual and be a sex educator and know a lot about, you know, how people can keep themselves selves, uh, uh, mm-hmm. uh, safer. Um, yeah. Or you can be like, you know, just everywhere doing all the things um, mm-hmm. and still not know shit either. So it's it's mm-hmm. it's a wide range. So I also don't want people to like, you know, to for, for many years, I was a person that did not have sex at sex parties and I have a friend that used to make fun of me about it yeah in a very nice way in a very nice way. okay yeah. Yeah, yeah. no it wasn't like it wasn't like yeah. a free oppression way it was just like a, it was like yeah. a running joke or whatever that and mm-hmm. i always would say i retired and i wasn't going to sex parties and they'd be like every time you say you're retired and every time i see you you're like a sex party and i'm like yeah i'm just here though you know hanging out <laughs> oh not really doing anything. yeah yeah I miss, I mean, I've only been to one sex club and I really liked it and I was looking forward to going to more and then everything happened. And, and so now I'm like, yeah. If I, if I wish, I literally wish I had like a, if I had a dollar or if I had a bag of, if I had a, like a bag of cannabis for every time someone mm-hmm. told me that, it would be great. Um, yeah, it's yeah. unfortunate that a lot of people were like really on the, I like to, you yeah. know, do my own horn. I like to feel like that's part of like why we do the work we do is 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 mm-hmm. to, um, you know, to help people feel confident enough, yeah, to, and, and equipped enough to go into those spaces and say, hey, mm-hmm. I know how to say, 
I don't want that or I would yeah. not like that, you know, and this is what I would like um, and, mm-hmm. and, and feel like, oh, I know how to navigate this space and maybe mm-hmm. I know some of the terms. But so and that's why, like, the, the educational part is, is is empowering. Right. So that we can yeah. enter those spaces. Uh, Absolutely. Well, and I want people to like pay you and like learn and understand yeah. how hey. to engage in these ways. Um, yeah. So could you share a little bit of kind of like where people could find your work, how they can support you, how they can learn some more about some of the things, things that we talked about today? Sure. You can, you can definitely find me on the, the safest, the safest site possible right now for me is like, not for me, is for everyone is Instagram. I'm on Instagram, Lord of Thunder LT on IG. You can go on my link, my link tree. You can see all the different um, mm-hmm. uh, opportunities where you can learn some from our classes. Uh, you can go to lolajean.com. You can see our, our quick and dirty series um, mm-hmm. and access our erotic asphyxiation, cl- our choking the pleasure class, excuse me. You can access our kink wrestling class. Uh, you can mm-hmm. reach out to me. Um, you know, I'll, you know, I'll keep my socials updated and let you know where it's coming. You can buy me a coffee. You can also find that mm-hmm. link on Instagram. If you feel like, mm-hmm. oh, I learned something cool. You want to buy me a tea? I, it's actually a mm-hmm. tea, but you can go to buymeacoffee.com. Yeah. Have the link on there. You can just send me like $5 tea and I'll, I'll go get me some tea. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, and, and also what's important is, you know, for sure, make, you know, come to the classes if you if that's mm-hmm. just not accessible, um, like online or, or in person. Mm-hmm. Follow, you know, follow, follow yeah. me on, on on social. Engage with me. Community mm-hmm. is important because uh, we have to keep each other safe. Uh, mm-hmm. Whatever I teach, I learn um, a ton. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's that's where people can find. Awesome. And all the other links to so all the like paywall stuff. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay. So like the, 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 all the fansly stuff, all the all the mm-hmm. other good stuff. Yeah, awesome. Well, thank you so much oh, for one like one quick thing. Sorry. Yeah. Do not join mm-hmm. my OnlyFans. So that happens sometimes. I I'm like off of the OnlyFans deal. Uh, okay. Yeah. You're I'm off, off of it. Only, I'm off of the only. I mean, it's still there, but I yeah. don't long so I don't support OnlyFans because it doesn't support uh, community. Yeah. So the sex worker community, and in the ways mm-hmm. in the ways that I I, I appreciate. So so mm. don't do it. I mean, there's some stuff on there you could, but it's it's you know whatever. Pay, pay but you're not like posting so you on there. I'm not, I'm not actively posting on there. No. Yeah. So, so yeah. you may, but you know, old someone stuff can still subscribe st- if they just want to be, you can't old stuff is new stuff to you. Mm-hmm. Exactly. <laughs> so, you know, I'm not, you and, know, and the money still go through. So if someone still just wants to subscribe. Not, to, it, yeah. Know? They could get it, but I just mean like, yeah, there won't be like any, any updated stuff, but yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay. You know, you can do that and you can also find out some of our, like, uh, I mean, a uh, BIPOC, um, adult collective. Mm-hmm. And we also, you know, raise money um, for micro yeah. grants for BIPOC sex workers. So you can donate to that as well through the links. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. This is fantastic. And I'm so happy we were able to get connected and have you on. Yeah. Oh, thanks. It was awesome. Uh, fun. Yeah. Yay. Thank you. All right. That does it for today's episode. Thank you so much for making it all the way through and keeping your ears, your hearts, and your minds open. It would mean so much to me if you could take a second or two after listening to this episode to leave a review on iTunes and let me know what you're enjoying about the show. I love reading you know, what your favorite episodes are, where you guys listen, um, and definitely feel free to share this with a friend. I mean, part of how we break down the stigmas around these topics is by talking about them, right? And, and sharing them with more people. So definitely share the podcast. Um, and again, really wanting to include all of you in this podcast. So if you have questions or you want to share a thought or an experience, please send in a voice memo to ask.letstalkaboutit at gmail.com. And I'm really excited to keep having these conversations and uh, breaking down these stigmas. So thank you all so, so, so much. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week and I'll talk to you next time. Thank you.